Welcome back, this is Dr. Jen Sung, where clinical excellence meets excellent results. Today we're going to talk about a mysterious parasite. What is it? How do you get it? How do you test for it? And what are some of the symptoms related to this mysterious parasite? Let's get right into it. Malaria. In 2022, there were over 241 million cases worldwide. Okay? 2,000 to 2,500 cases are found in the United States mostly from travel to Africa or Southeast Asia. There's a small percentage that are actually transmitted locally. There have been a few cases in Florida and Texas. Now, when you get a mosquito bite, the acute symptoms are high fever, flu-like symptoms, right? So if you traveled outside the country to those areas that have this malarial um, infections, you're going to get significant symptoms. The problem is there's a certain percentage, as high as like 35% or more, when they get the infection, it lies dormant and it hides in the liver. And sometimes you won't get any symptoms for 10 days up to a year. So you don't even know you have malaria. And you come back a year later, you get sick. They don't correlate it to the travel you did a year prior. Now, the infection is called plasmodium. It's a protozoan. There are different types. Falciparum, Vivax, Ovale, Malariae, and Nolacy. These are the most common one. This one right here uh, makes you the most sick of all the other infections, okay? Now, there are two forms that are known to give you what we call relapsing fever. So you feel better, you get a fever, you feel better. This kind of goes back and forth. It's called Plasmodium vivax and ovale, okay? Because it lies dormant and then affects the red blood cells, gets systemic, and you get a fever, and this vicious cycle can occur. Now, these infections can lie dormant anywhere from a few months up to four years. So you have this chronic infection, and that's why we call it a mysterious parasite because it hides, and then it comes out, and then it creates these symptoms unrelated to malaria. It might be just inflammation, anemia, lymphoma, cognitive decline or brain fog issues, potential trigger for autoimmune disease. So, this malarial infection that cycles in and out of our system can inflame our system and it can trigger a cytokine uh, impact and cause autoimmunity, okay? Meaning thyroid issues, Crohn's disease, uh, ulcerative colitis, a lot of different things can occur, okay? Now, the transmission is a female Anopheles mosquito and blood transfusions. In the United States, they don't actually check for uh, the plasmodium species uh, when they take your blood donation. So blood transmission is a mode of transmission for malaria. Now there's a test. It's a blood test. It's called a PCR for plasmodium. It's approximately about $180. Um, so if you have symptoms, uh, these recurring symptoms, and you get checked for Lyme's disease and you don't have Lyme, you might want to go ahead and check for Plasmodium. Okay? Although the case is about 2,500 cases in the United States are confirmed, I believe there's probably a lot more asymptomatic cases floating around. And when you have these um, symptoms that wax and wane, come and go, you need to go ahead and check to see if you have this. Um, it's, the transmission is really mosquito to human and a mosquito bites to human and they can get infected and this vicious circle can occur where mosquito human mosquito back to human so this vicious cycle of reinfecting can go on all right my name is dr jin sung where clinical excellence meets excellent results and we'll see you guys next week on the healthy side have an awesome day